it's your boy, Dr. Robert King, founder of Assistant Living University. This is not my last time talking to you, but I really wanted to forget about all the technology and all the techniques and all the strategies and, and all the things that I've been teaching you and, and, and going over with you. I wanted to kind of like put all that aside right now and I just kind of wanted to talk to you because this section is considered. Hey, check this out. Whether you are a doctor, a nurse, a physical therapist, or someone who's been working in the healthcare industry a long time, isn't it time for you to own your own residential assistant living facility? Some of you have been visiting ALS and taking care of residents, but now it's time for you to own your very own. That's your next level of success. You can do this, we can help. Go to ALFownership.com and let us help you get your facility up and running. God bless. Uh, 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 your mission. In, 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 this, in, this, in this module right here, uh, there's very few videos in here. I, I just want to talk to you. I want to take you back to where you were when you begin the process. What was it that got you excited about opening your own facility? What, 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 what was and still is your mission? In other words, they often say in, 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 in business, what's your why? Why did you open your facility? Why did you go through all the things you went through to get your facility up and running? Why did you go through all the inspections and, and all the uh, uh, documents? And why did you go through all the forms? And, and why did you go and sit in class and become an administrator? Why did you remodel your entire house? And, and why did you put that kind of tile down? And, and why did you put the grip bars inside of that bathroom? And, and then why did you have that re-grand opening? And, and why did you pay the money for that license? And, and why did you do this? And why did you do that? Why did you open your facility? What prompted you? What provoked you? What caused you to rise up? Let me give a little bit of reason about my why. It, it, the business side of my why was purely investment mindset. I wanted to start a business on the business side, watch this now, where I could have income without having to come in. And I found that owning a residential ALF did that for me. So that was the business side of my why. Now the personal side of my why, which, which, which ultimately became my mission, is I wanted to give all elderly a option, a choice, when it came to going to a place where they were supposed to live the rest of their life versus going to a place, i.e. large nursing home, where they went to die. My grandmother, we was forced to put her in a facility for the last seven years of her life because we no longer could take care of her, although we had the time because my mom, Irene, God bless her, retired from her job to take care of her mama. But it got to the point medically, we were unable to handle all that, so we were forced to go find a place. We never, ever, ever heard of residential ALF in the state of Indiana while we were searching for a place. We only knew of nursing homes. So we tried to pick the best one possible. We thought we got the best one possible. And we wanted one where we had the freedom as a family to go there anytime we wanted to so we could make sure that they were doing 
what they promised to do and what we were paying them to do. We hated it. <laughs> my grandmother hated it. My mother hated it. But we literally had no options. Why? Because the residential assisted living facility owners in the state of Indiana, particularly in the Merrillville area that we look for, did a terrible job at marketing their facilities. When we did our research, we never even knew that that existed. We never, we never went to do a tour. We never went to look at one. We never knew it existed. That means that although there were hundreds and many near the nursing home, the owners built nice facilities, owned nice facilities, ran nice facilities, but did a terrible job at marketing, so that became my mission. That I wanted to make sure that where I lived in Southwest Florida, that I would give family members an option somewhere small and intimate to take their mama to live out the rest of her days in glory, in dignity, in style, in class. So that became my personal mission what's yours what is your mission if you go back to the mission and people say you should write a mission statement okay fine if you want to write a mission statement write a mission statement I never wrote one because it was in my heart I didn't have to write it down it was in my heart so I never had to write one down but if you need to write a mission statement down write it down put it on your wall put it on your dashboard put it on your mirror so every day you wake up you see it because once you know what your mission is then you're gonna to have to watch this you have to reverse engineer it and get to work every day to fulfill the mission so my mission was to allow people People in Southwest Florida where I had moved to after my grandmother lived in that terrible facility for seven years until her death my mission was to make sure Southwest Florida had options okay now once I fulfilled that mission and began to affect the people in my community then I realized that wasn't big enough right now I'm just taking care of a small portion and I can't take care of the millions that need to be cared for. So I said, God, what can I do now? I'm just one person. And then on a weekend from a Thursday evening to a Monday morning, he dropped the entire assisted living university training, downloaded it in my lap. And the mission of assisted living university is was and still is to help 1,000 people open, own, operate successful residential ALS. Okay, now watch this. If I can help, and I am doing it right now by talking to you, if I can help these people run and operate successful ALS, I have extended my mission because I can only have so many houses myself. But with a thousand students out there helping eight to 10 residents in each house, I have expanded my reach. And that's my mission. Forget about me. What's yours? What is your mission? What was your mission? I want you to bring it back. Put it in front of you. Marinate it into your heart. I want you to understand that it has to happen because there's nobody else out there that's going to care for the elderly like you. It has to work. It has to work. And I'm talking right now to people in this training who already have their businesses up and running. I'm not talking to no newbies. I'm talking to my soldiers. The ones that put in the work, the energy, and the effort to get that place up and running. I'm talking to you directly. It has to work. 
Somebody, mama, somewhere right now is depending on you to have your facility running smoothly. Somebody somewhere right now has just been told that mama can't go home no more. She has to go to a facility. And some kid right now at two in the morning is online researching, trying to find a facility. And don't you let the big boys beat you. When they grab that www dot and type in facilities in their community, you should show up. Because I already know, think about it. When given an option, oh my God. When given an option, do I take mama to this big, gigantic, institution looking place with two, three, four hundred people? Or do I take mama to a house, watch this, that looks like the front of the house that we grew up in? Do I take mama to a house where there's only seven, eight other people and she can get more personal care? Do I take mama, I got a choice here, do I take mama to a small, intimate home that will know her name, that will know what she likes to eat, that will lo love on her, that will laugh with her, that will listen to her. Do I take mama to a small intimate home that looks like a home, that's inside of a home, that smells like a home, where she's treated, oh my God, with premier concierge treatment? Or do I take mama to a large institution where she's just another number inside of another room. I want to have an option for mama. So all of you who are watching this now, I'm coming at you with my coach's voice. Don't you quit. You can afford to quit. Because somebody's mama right now needs you to fulfill your mission. Somebody's mama right now needs you. Am I preaching? I wasn't trying to preach. But this thing is in my spirit, man. We have, a, we have an opportunity here that we can totally change the most vulnerable group of people in our life, and that's the elderly. We can change how they live, and we can change how they die, all with dignity. <laughs> So whatever your mission is, don't you quit. Don't you quit. You keep going. You keep going. You keep going. Now you've been given the tools and the techniques and the strategy to fill your house. You're just three, four, five beds away from being totally full. And when that happens, your life totally changes. Take it from me. And once you get the first house up, full, running, profitable, generate eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 a month, every month, net income to you after you pay all the bills, then you go open house number two. And then number three. Because every time you open another house, I get to feel a little bit better. I get to smile a little bit bigger. My heart gets warmer. And my God looks down and says, you've been faithful, my brother. <laughs> Woo! You started something to affect the lives of the elderly and gave them a choice. So I salute you, my ALF warrior. You did it. And now, you're going to make it work. It's going to be successful. You're not going to quit. <laughs> I hope y'all ain't mad at me if I had to get into my coach's mode to have that conversation. So let me close like I love the close. And I hope you can feel my spirit when I say this. When your heart is right with God and your desire is to please God, God is obligated to bring you into the company of the people that you need to know, to the knowledge of the things that you need to know. That's critical to your success and destiny in life. Let me say it one more again. Let me slow it down. When your heart is right with God and your desire is to please God, God is obligated to bring you into the company of the people 
that you need to know, to the knowledge of the things that you need to know that is critical to your success and destiny in life. Don't quit. Revisit your mission. We need you. I need you to survive. The elderly need you to survive. Your staff need you to survive. The industry needs you to survive. Don't give up. Hang in there. Help is here. God bless you.